I'm here with Chief Hogue at the City of Ketchikan Fire Department. A lot is going on and we wanted to get to the bottom of what's going on in Ketchikan regarding COVID-19 and what of course you guys can do out there watching to keep yourselves healthy, keep yourselves protected. So thank you for joining us today. You're, you're welcome. I'm sure you're super busy. So Very busy, but <laughs> glad to sit down with you and try to get information out to the public. One of our biggest tasks right now is to keep the public informed so that they're not as afraid of what might be happening in town. So as far as Ketchikan goes, what exactly is the landscape that we're looking at now? So as of the current moment, uh, we have no confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the Ketchikan community. Uh, unfortunately, last night it was reported out of Fairbanks that there are two new confirmed cases in Fairbanks. Um, so as you said, it, it is changing rapidly. We have information coming in on a constant basis that we're trying to digest, and then put into a format where the community can take appropriate action from it. All of this with the idea of trying to keep our community safe. Exactly, and then as far as you know, you're the emergency manager, what, do, what exactly does that mean? Um, and who all is involved in these going ons that are happening? Right, so each emergency is different. Um, if you have a weather event, that includes different people than if you have a public health event. Our emergency operations plan is what's called an all hazards plan. So we try to address anything that could come up from public health to natural disaster to even things like terrorist attacks and how we would deal with those. And many of the techniques and the methods are, that we use are the same, like public information, communication, evacuation. Those can be used the same across any hazard. And so we have a plan that addresses each of those sorts of tasks separately. So tell me who all is involved with this current situation and going on? Right, so yesterday we, we did move our EOC from a level one activation, which is a warm monitoring mode, uh, to a level two activation. And we're beginning to staff many of our EOC positions. All of the people that participate in our EOC have regular full-time jobs. Like I'm the fire chief, the public health nurse that's part of my unified command team. Her job is to be the public health nurse. In this case, it's a public health emergency. So we formed a unified command. We have myself as the city of Ketchikan and Ketchikan Gateway Borough Emergency Manager. I have Corey Padrone, who is the Saxman Emergency Manager. And we have Jen Bergen, who is the public health nurse here in town. That's our unified command team. And we're making decisions as a team. Uh, and I'm just the voice for that team. Um, underneath that team, we have lots of other players. We have um, city and borough staff, both participating in the EOC. We have um, other local community organizations, people with incident command system experience that are participating in our EOC. Uh, we're staying in close communication with uh, state and federal partners. We're constantly talking to the state EOC, uh, we've been in communication with the airport, the Customs and Border Protection, the Coast Guard, all of these different agencies that we communicate with through our local emergency planning committee. Many of those same people roll in and, and help support our emergency operations center when we have a disaster. Okay, so as far as what people can do in the community to keep themselves and their loved ones safe, what are the recommendations right now? So the biggest thing that we're focusing on right now is that social distancing. Uh, we're trying to flatten the curve, and, and anybody who watches national media has seen what that is already, um, but it's, it's important to understand that that's the way that we as a group can have the biggest impact right now. Our country has limitations currently on testing, and they're working very hard to remove those limitations. We don't currently have a vaccine for this, um, and they're working on that as well. So what we need to do in the meantime is we need to slow down any progress to give our systems time to adjust for that and to provide us with testing capabilities and to provide us with vaccination capabilities. Um, so to do that, we want people to stay at home if they don't need to go out. The schools are closed. We made the decision to close our public locations in addition to that because we didn't want people who were home from school for extra time to then be tempted to go to those locations where they're gonna interact with people. The whole idea is to separate people and stop 
the spread of the virus. I want to point out too that although these facilities might be closed to the public, that doesn't mean that they're still operating. So Absolutely. I know some people are worried. They're like, oh my goodness, I hear that you know so, such and such is closed. That doesn't mean you can't still uh, work with them telephonically or online or right. even dropping off, for example, payments for your bills. Um, all of these places still are staffed and are currently operating. That's correct. In the case of all the city and KPU offices and the, and the borough offices, many of those places where you would normally interact one-on-one, -on -one, they're closed to the public, but they are all still operating in some capacity um, and continuing to provide our core services to the public. A and um, adjusting operations so that we don't have as much one-on-one -on -one interaction um, and doing things like uh, each one is doing different things like waiving potentially late fees or extending deadlines for things whatever we can do to take care of the public the key is to keep everyone as safe as possible and limit the spread and our leadership in the borough in the city of Ketchikan and the sixth city of Saxman are all committed to taking care of the public while still limiting the spread. So tell me a little bit about the school lunch program that's supposed to be implemented here soon. Yes, I talked with the, the superintendent this morning and the school does intend to continue their school lunch program. On the 23rd of March, they're gonna restart that program uh, for breakfast and lunch. And they'll be offering those at four of the schools in the community, uh, Point Higgins, Fawn Mountain, Schoenbar, and Houtling. And in addition to that, they're also working on a plan to be able to deliver those lunches to people who can't come and get them for students that can't come and get them. Awesome. Um, they will be doing that in like a brown bag format. You come in, you pick up your lunch, you leave, and continue to practice the social distancing that we've been talking about. Definitely. As far as what members of the community can do, I know some people have asked about what about those elders that we would like to make sure that they're not getting out in public. Is there any recommendations as far or what people can do as far as assisting those that shouldn't be leaving their homes at the moment? Right. The, the elders are definitely a high risk population. We, we do want them to stay in unless really unless they're going to get medical care. Um, and so they're going to need extra support in that time. Um, the, the yellow card for senior discounts, it was announced in the press conference yesterday that the borough is uh, extending the, the uh, expiration of those indefinitely awesome. until this emergency is over and also allowing for uh, a senior can, can give you their card to go do their shopping for them. So they're going to need people to help them out. People who are well, um, not in large groups, but if you know a senior that might need help, reach out and see if they need assistance and offer to go do their grocery shopping for them or see if they need anything brought to them so that they can be taken care of in this time as well. In addition to that, our EOC is looking at that. We're, we're starting to reach out to the local nonprofits and the groups that take care of our vulnerable populations, the homeless, um, people with access and functional needs, um, our seniors, and trying to find out what we can do to support their organizations to continue providing some of the services that they provide while still doing the social distancing things that we're encouraging. Definitely. As far as people finding correct information, where can they go to figure all that out? Right, so the, the borough, we've set up a web page on the borough website and there will be a link to that on the city website shortly if we don't have it up yet. Um, in addition, a uh, good source for information is coronavirus.alaska.gov or, and that's the state page on coronavirus, and then the CDC website is coronavirus.gov. And all of those have really good information. Um, it's fact-based and science-based and um, good information to follow. Good yeah, practices. I think a big thing that's um, been happening is there's been a lot of rumors circulating. And so it's really important for all of you out there to make sure that you're going to a good, credible source for your information. Yes. Is there anything else you'd like to share and make kind of the community aware of regarding all of this? So the main tips we want to share with the public are to get your information from a verified source. Come to our website, Catch Can Gateway Borough uh, COVID-19 page. Go to coronavirus.alaska.gov. Go to coronavirus.gov for the CDC page. If you're sick, stay home. If your children are sick, keep them home. If someone in your family does test positive for COVID-19, we want you to keep your entire family at home. 
If you're an older person and at higher risk, stay home. And the last thing we want to do is for those of you with underlying health conditions, respiratory issues, heart disease, etc., we want you to stay home and stay safe and stay healthy. We want all of our community to stay healthy. Stay healthy, catch can.